started off in church playing the drums, then that went to like band and in high school. I was in band from sixth grade to like 11th grade. And like somewhere in high school, that's when I started like doing beats, you know. So playing the drums like kind of like boiled over, but I never, um, even when I started making beats, I never really tried to pursue it professionally until I thought to myself I was getting good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, maybe I could, you know, do this. But that wasn't until like after like high school, like my freshman year of college, um, the year 2000, like 2001 is when I graduated. So like my freshman year, that's when I, you know, I started, I f started feeling myself, kind of, so to speak. And my homeboy, Marcus Jennings, uh, he uh, was going to uh, Virginia. So, a light bulb uh, popped on in my head. I was like, uh, Neptune's in Virginia. Timberland is in Virginia. Hey, take my demo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I know I had like, how many some beats? I had like 60 some beats on a CD that he like consolidated to like 43 beats. I remember that number like specifically. It was like 43 beats on a CD. So um, I was in Memphis, he's in Virginia. He called me one night, I was like, yo, the light zone is in the studio. This studio here. He was like, the light zone in the studio. I got the CD. I'm finna go. I'm finna go see what's good. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, he goes to the door, um, rings the bell. A guy named Tim Green answers the door. Tim Green is a childhood friend of uh, Sebastian and Timberland. So, um, you know, long story short, he gives the Tim, he gives the CD to Tim Green. Tim Green then plays it for uh, Sebastian and. Um, then they give it to Timberland and you know that was like this this was um, when he you know rung the bell uh, at the studio it was like I think uh, December of 05 and it was one of the beats that they they used it was two beats actually that they use um, for uh, there was one of them was about to go on Shock Value 1 Tim's first album but it didn't make it and Another one they used, because around this time, Timberland was uh, working on Justin Timberlake's project. So, two of those beats, like, got recorded to by Justin Timberlake and Timberland, which was crazy, because I was, like, still in Memphis. I'm just, like, you know, around this time, I was still on the phone back and forth with, with Tim Green and Marcus. And, um, like, they flew me out, I think, like, six or eight months later when it was time to mix the record, but, like, it, 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 it didn't make it. So this was 06, I think of in October or November of, of 06, because I kept, I was sending CDs up back and forth because they wanted to hear um, my progression, you know. And um, I flew up in 06 of, yeah, October or November of 06. And then, um, you know, I think I moved to Virginia in 05. No, not 05, but uh, uh, it was the 5th. February 5th of uh, 07, like that next year. And when I moved, like Tim left. So it was, you know, that was kind of like a want, want, want moment. You know what I mean? The song didn't make the album and then, you know, I, but I, I just had to leave Memphis. And then I was living with Marcus, like, you know, bunk beds, broke stuff, you know, grinding. <laughs> I don't know if it was either Up Jumps the Boogie or one in a million. It was one of those beats that really made me want to do, like, just produce music. I don't know which one it was. I think I think it was Up Jumps the Boogie. Like, I heard that beat. Because I was always in the, like, drums and stuff. So his drums was just... I would hear his drums and always mimic, like, his patterns on the desk at school. I got in a lot of trouble for it. But, uh... I would say, I would say it was Up Jumps the Boogie. By Tim and uh, you know, yeah, Tim Magoo, that was Tim Magoo record. Yeah, that inspired me to want to make beats. <laughs> Just listen to different, uh, different, um, not genres of music, but like world music. Like, I like, you know, like I said, I'm a drummer, so I like listening to like weird sounds. For some reason, just listening to crazy sounds inspires me to like do beats because my sound is is very uh innovative you know so when i hear like quirky sounds it, it, you know that inspires me to like make music or to like want to sample that and use it 
Sebastian Project, his album Cool Intentions, is special to me because, like, um, I wanted to make that, like, a point where, like, Tim would hear what I was doing with his brother and, you know, and my music, like, I was, I wanted him to hear that growth because I, I really feel like I really growed as a producer because it was just me and Sebastian here. Like I say, nobody was here in the studio, it was just me and him, and we was just, um, we was just working. So I just wanted to really, like, you know, try to use his project to, you know, really get his attention, you know what I mean? So, and I felt like I really grown musically from, from his project, and, you know, it's a special project for me. I need, like, me, I felt like I need, I needed failure. You know what I mean? Like, I needed to be told no, and, like, I feel like I needed to hear that so I can defy those, those comments and those eyes just to, you know, just break through the wall. I feel like I needed to hear that to a certain extent. Like, when I was making beats, I used, I used to always feel like my competition was who I was inspired by. So, like, I used to try to, like, go after the Neptunes, Dr. Dre, and Timbaland, and, like, right now, I still carry that with me to this day. Like, I still feel like, like, I'm trying to be on their level and be better than them, surpass them. I tell young producers all the time, like, just don't worry about, like, getting on. I think... I think that's like the biggest uh, problem with most of these producers because they start to sound like everybody else so they compromise the sound because they're trying to like get on and make it but if you really just like focus on your music and just don't worry about like getting on because if you're good enough you will be like somebody's gonna find you you know what I mean so just work on your music and just continue just to make beats and just make music you know what I mean and you'll get good enough to like by the time, like when it's your time, like, you know, your music will be dope and then you'll stand out. Because the more music you make, you know, you start to begin to, like, create your own sound and stuff like that. So that's what I tell them all the time. Like, just make sure you just, just do it for the love. Like, don't worry about the money because the money and all that stuff is going to come. That's what Tim tell me all the time. Like, well, if, when I first came, he used to always say, like, don't, don't worry about the money because the money is going to come. Just... Focus on your music, because that's the most important, like your craft.